18 Parker Street, Wilmington, Massachusetts. There used to sit a little white house. Google Street View hasn't caught up with a demolition job that took place a few years back, so if I give it a search, there it sits. As if I could give the place a ring and find her precious voice on the other end, yelling some thick accented Boston nonsense in my ear about how long it's been since I last called. Memories are tricky in the way that they never stop being present. 18 Parker Street was the home of my grandmother, Mimi Foley, a strong-willed Irish Catholic woman with a heart of a puppy and the remarkable ability to have lost every remote in the house at all times. <laughs> turn it off! This is horrible! Turn it off! Turn it off! I'm trying, Mimi, I swear. I'm half-assed looking for the remote. I think you have it. I can't watch those slimy, horrible, ah, please turn it off. Steve Irwin is playing with snakes. She hates snakes. <laughs> Says they come out of nowhere, especially in the Black Lakes. Can't see them coming, not until they've wrapped their slimy muscles around your limbs and dragged you halfway down to the water's floor do you realize you've been taken. Mimi, I'm almost 100% sure that it's under your butt. <laughs> she has both her hands over her eyes, peeking through her fingers. Stop looking, I can't. Yes, you can. I'm almost laughing now, I'm smiling so hard. She peels one of her hands away from barely blocking anything and starts reaching around the crevices of her baby blue felt lazy boy. The brown wooden handle on the side pops up her toeless left foot. An aggressive form of diabetes has been eating away at her flesh for years now, but both her breasts lost to cancer says this body ain't going down without a fight. She's a Foley, it's a natural response. Mary Teresa Foley, to be exact. Fitting, she'd be named after a saint. The closest thing to religion I've ever known was the unwavering devotion her mighty soul called love. I'm in the kitchen now, spiraling my way into a can of SpaghettiOs. The meatball ones are my favorite, but the plain ones are 20 cents cheaper, so I'm making do. I toss them in a microwave and project my voice into the sunroom. Did you find it? She giggles, the laugh of an 86-year-old child. I did! You were right all along. It was under my butt the whole time. <laughs> She lifts it up in the air as evidence. Nice and warm, I bet. What? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I smile up at her innocently, finding a seat next to her on the floor. You hungry, memes? I say, sticking a spoonful of steaming hot saucy O's in front of her mouth. No, thank you, dear. I've been eating cookies all day. Cookies aren't dinner, Mimi, I say, positively serious. I know, dear. Why is the screen fuzzy? I panicked! She screams mid-giggle. I switch channels and hop up. I'm going out tonight, okay? Don't wait up. You know I can't not wait up. I worry sick about you, you know that. I don't know. I spent the whole of my tiny hood begging for the love of mother that could never be and the love of father that never wanted. I spent the last two years in the streets of Boston, dead through two winters. Care is so foreign to me that hers feels like an infringement on my freedom. I'm a child still, but a child of no bounds. I can't stop moving. Running is the only option. I've only been here a few months, and I'm already on my way out. I fly, I fly out to Chicago for a Navy boot camp in a month. I love you, memes, I yell back as I run up the stairs to get ready. I pop my head in the sunroom and smile goofy. I'll call. You better. She smiles, but she ain't playing. And turn off the lights on your way out, will you, dear? Which ones? The Christmas ones. But leave the train on until you come back home. Keeps me company in the silence. OK, memes. No snakes while I'm gone. She laughs. Never again. <laughs> I'm looking down at the makeshift Massachusetts ID in the palm. In my palm is the lion inches forward, sweaty and scared shitless. They're not going to take this. No fucking way in hell they're going to take this. I used my permit as a base, printed out some photocopied fake I found online, then glued the paper to both sides, shaved down the edges with a nail file for good measure. The thing looks like a hack job. I get closer and closer to the muscled human in the doorway. I step up in my ocean blue, sharp cornered blazer tucked into my little black sleeveless vest, doubles for job interviews. I look up and smile, jailbait childish in this face. She smiles, stays stern and lips, 
She doesn't ask for my ID, just puts her callous fingers under my elbow and pulls me through the door. Have fun, she demands. Okay, I whimper in excitement. The woman behind the ticket booth catch my entire frame with one glance, scans me thoroughly, smiles like a Christmas table full of meat makes you smile. Starving. You're good, they say in unison. Eerie. My cunt is pulsing and I'm covered in goosebumps. I know no one in this world, all of it. Whole rotting gorgeous world, I know no one. I am inside, dripping in between them all. The ceilings are church-like unreachable, pipes and mazes dangling by thick wires. The room is dark, but light compared to the screaming black that is the dance floor to my right. Three pool tables full of women look up and watch me watch it all. My wonder is edible. You could lick it off me and taste everything I've never known. I can see me sliding down the back of their thoughts as I look back and up and down and straight into every pair of eyes on me. I'm a puppy in a cat park heated pussies hissing to rip me open. I see bodies, sweat, rhythm, touching, squeezing, finding. I know exactly where I need to be. I practice this in front of mirrors for hours on end, in job interviews, on stages, in neon, naked, drool down strange, scuffed chins. I know this. I live to dance. I walk toward the wet flesh and dive in like a lonely spirit into an ocean at midnight. I think it's midnight, but I've never been able to make much sense of time. I move like something between hip-hop and sex. I dance like there's always an audience, naked. Sex hides there, in the wanting, in the being wanted. Her hand, her hands find the front of my pelvis, wrapped around from behind. I can feel the heat of her cunt on my coccyx traveling up my spine, resting on the hairs of my neck, met by the warmth of her breath already waiting there. I move my entire human into her as she tightens her hold. Her left palm slides up to dip down into jeans. She pulls hair. I smell myself. I'm so wet. I'm up against the wall. Her lips peel from my neck and meet my ear. I have a boat on the bay. Come with me. I didn't have to be ass, so I don't answer. I eye the woman at the door on my way out, begging. It's leaking out of my eyes like crying. I want all the want. The back of the parking lot, far enough away from the building to be nowhere, he screams, hey faggots! A glass bottle hits the hood of a Camry three cars down. He gets closer, still separated by a fence, but much closer. My blood is hot and stuck against the inside of my skin, refusing to move. My mother must be near. Hey Mike, come check this shit out. They're not faggots, they're fucking dykes, and hot fucking dykes at that. Hey, beautiful, why don't you fuck right here? Save yourself the trip home. Silence. This isn't a safe zone to bubble on a millennial campus. This is Rhode Island at two in the morning. This is where women don't walk around alone at night. It's best not to engage. Bitch, you hear me? I said you ladies shouldn't be out here alone this late. What are you, mute, deaf, both? Fucking cunts. He's climbing the fence. Mike is still grounded. Dude, you're gonna fucking kill yourself. Get down. Oh, I plan to, Mikey boy. He's up and over and dangling. She loosens her grip from in between my fingers. Fuck this. And runs off back toward neon lights and muscled doorways. His boots hit the pavement's mud slush. Winter and fear find their way to my spine and I tremble in them. I'm trying to move, but as the thought balls itself in my neural pathways and shoots down to my limbs. His fingers are wrapping around my forearm and pulling. My sweaty business getup is tucked into his chest and his other hand tastes like dried beer and rusty fence and blood. He cut himself. My lips are sealed with his blood. Dude, what the fuck are you doing? You're drunk, man. Come on, let's go, screams Mike from the other side of the fence. Silence. Mike isn't needed anymore. Dude, fuck, where are you going? Fuck, 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 fuck. Mike is muttering as he fades into the distance. I can't walk, I'm stuck. It's a place I go, so I'm dragged. I smell the woods and I am calm. I feel a tree along my spine. The bark catches strands of my hair and holds. It's dark, I can't distingu distinguish human from animal. 
I rest in the thought of animal. The animal has claws ripping at jeans, teeth gnawing at cold, hard, raised skin. I'm pushed or I fall or both. The animal's weight is twice mine, maybe triple. The flesh of the forest floor is seeping up the crack of my naked ass. I'm freezing. I'm bleeding. Fuck. He's disgusted. You're bleeding. Fuck. He finds the Kotex rope and pulls. It feels like a combination of shitting backwards and headphones being ripped from your ears. The music is cut abruptly, white noise left in the place of sound. Everything is ringing. He tosses it. I smell iron. If I fight it, I'm not straight. I get to stay gay. If I don't, it doesn't have to be rape. I get to stay alive. I die inside white space. I feel pain, but also nothing. When pain cannot carry itself, it flees to nothing. It hides in flesh and forgets itself. The sun is peeking over metal playgrounds, setting light to the war of night, a bleeding, bloody massacre. Fuck, gross. What if someone sees that? Some kind, do-nothing guy or girl just out for a stroll, just out for some coffee. They don't need to see this shit. I clean up the scene like a child copying a detective sitcom. Leaves cover blood. Leaves cover cum-covered leaves. Tampons don't throw themselves away. The trash is full, but I can't just swing it around like a pocket watch. The recycling is empty. Maybe there's more than one way to reuse this. Recycling trauma through bodies so no one's stories is trashed. Fuck. It's trash day. I didn't put the bins out. Memes is gonna kill me. Memes. Fuck. I never called. I open the door as quietly as my shaking hands can muster. I creep into the dining room and pull out a chair, especially grateful to find a cushion where an almost unbearable soreness was expecting otherwise. It still hurts, though. I stare at the model train as it makes its way around the table, past me, carries on. The lights in the windows, the snow on the streets. There's, an, there's a little man at the post office, a woman at the stop, waiting for a train that never will. Is that you? Yes, memes, it's me. No response. Then weeping. Not crying, she's sobbing. I put all the weight of my upper body into the palms of my hands and push myself up, make my way to the sunroom. I told you to call me. If you, I waited, I was so, I couldn't sleep. I was waiting for your call all night. I was so scared. Why didn't you call? I thought something terrible. I was, I was so. I make my way to her baby blue chair and kneel beside her kicked up legs, lay my head heavy in her lap. I feel safe. I feel pain. I feel blood dripping down my thigh. I feel angry at me for making her sad. I feel sad. I feel blood staining memory. I feel nothing. I feel safe. I know memes, I know, I'm sorry. I lost my phone, it won't ever happen again, it won't, I'll call, I promise, I'll call. I was so worried, I know. I was so, I know memes, but I'm safe, I'm okay. It won't ever happen again, I promise. You were just graced by Sage Foley, everybody, give it up.